This is the bike which I built a few weeks ago over on GCN Tech, a bike which I feel can rival the performance of some of the fastest, most exotic bikes available on the market in 2023. But this bike just costs a thousand pounds to build. And in order to prove if this bike truly can rival the performance of top spec bikes, which cost over 10,000 pounds, come to a racetrack for a race. I've come to the famous Castle Coombe race circuit located in the southwest of England. The track is three kilometers long and during the week when the race cars aren't screaming round here, they let us lycra clad road cyclists race round. So I've entered the elite race for tonight, which is actually the highest category within the UK racing system. And the guys that race the elite category take things pretty seriously. Not only that, they've got some pretty serious kit, which I'm gonna take a look at in just a few minutes. I'm also gonna take a closer look at my bike in a few minutes. While I'm currently pinning my numbers on, let me just give you a heads up about the speed that these races typically go at. So I've raced these a couple of times before, and you can generally expect the elite race to have an average speed of between, <laughs> carry on saying this, between 45 and 50 kilometers an hour for a whole hour, which is kind of bonkers. I'm gonna get finishing pinning my number on. I need to make it aero to help make me go even faster. And then I'm gonna venture around to the car park and try and find some of the guys in my race and take a look at their bikes and crucially, ask them how much they're worth. Right, first spot on Bike Patrol. Justin, I had to come and see you after you've made it into episode three on the tech episode. Um, right, tell us about your bike then. Dogmore F, latest, greatest. Did a bit of old Durace with yeah. the new Altegra. Obviously Envy wheels, because they're the finest. It looks very fancy, yeah. doesn't it? It's pretty nice. How much is it? Uh, it'll set you back about 12,000 quid. <laughs> you get nearly 12 of my bikes for that. Rob, tell us about your bike. This is an Aura Adventure Tailor made. Yeah. Pretty fast. I'll take with DIT with reserve wheels. Yeah. Tyres is Continental Tubeless. All right, most important question I'm asking people How much has this bike set you back? I'd probably say about five grand, but don't tell the missus. <laughs> That's actually quite a good value, is it not? For a yeah, new bike. Really good value for money. Right, next bike, Liam. Tell us a little bit about it. What's going on? Well, I've got, got the nine speed Sora. That's good. Never let me down, never let me down. Good to see like value for money components at bike races. I've got Pirelli P0s. All right, uh, power meter, you got some yeah. aluminum handlebars, carbon frame. It's looking all right. How much do you reckon this bike set you back? What's it worth? I don't know, a couple thousand? You reckon? With everything. All in. Well, if you include the computer and stuff. Fair play, all right. Yeah. All right, last but not least, George. Tell us about your bike. So we've got uh, an S-Works SL7. Yeah. Um, dual race 11 speed throughout. CLX wheels running uh, Conti GP 5000s with some latex tubes. And quad power meter, dual sided. And some little sea bear pulleys as well on the rear as well. Oh, little speedy pulleys. Some, some, yeah. We Love have, it. Yeah. Right, final question. Yes. I've asked everyone, how much is your bike? How much is your bike? Uh, I think it's roughly about 10 to 11,000 pounds. That's quite a lot, isn't it's it? It's quite a lot of money, yeah. Yeah, but it'll be yeah. worth it if you beat me in the race, though, won't it? We'll have to see, won't we? <laughs> right, to see the you. grid. <laughs> <laughs> Enough about other people's bikes. Let me tell you a little bit more about mine. So, this is the bike which I spent the last few weeks upgrading over on GCN Tech. The original base bike is a giant... OCR3, and it cost me 200 pounds. But since then, I've upgraded other areas of the bike, and if you want to see what I've done, check those videos out. But in total, it set me back, give or take, around 1,000 pounds. But what about if you're someone, say, starting cycling from scratch? Not only are you going to have to buy a bike, you also have to buy all the kit and the helmet and the shoes, everything I've got on. So I reckon all in, you're looking at close to the best bit of 3,000 pounds for this setup that I'm going to ride around here which is still less than quite a lot of modern bikes that you buy brand new. I mean, if you remove the facts about the power meter, we're much down close to the 2,000 pound marker, which in my eyes is actually not too bad, really, all things considered. Now, those of you who are regular viewers over on GCN Tech will notice the Dura-Ace 10-speed crank on my bike. 
Now, I did say that I would do a forfeit for undervaluing a modern Dura-Ace crank. However, there were at least three people in the comments who said there was no need for me to do that. So I'm going to take their word for it and ignore that the whole thing happened. Anyway, I've rambled on for long enough. The um, race actually starts in nine minutes. I should probably go and warm up with everybody else. And I'll see you on the start line. Right, we're on the start line. Everyone's got some mega kit. We're ready to go. It's going to be an hour of full gas racing. I can't help but notice my bike looks considerably cheaper than everyone else's. Whatever. See how it goes. So with the race underway, I switched on my old racing brain from a few years ago and focused on two aspects to start with, hiding from the wind and staying near the front of the group. This all went well for the first couple of laps, but it wasn't long until my old racing brain forgot that I don't actually have the same level of fitness from 2018. So after attacking and staying solo for just a minute or so, I soon found myself back in the pack with my tail between my legs, but crucially, still with a smile on my face. The bike was holding up well and following on from last year when I raced a budget bike here, I'm pleased to say that the chain stayed on the bike. In fact, the bike was serving me well and it was only my legs and body which still seemed to be the weakest link. Aerodynamically, this bike isn't quite up there with modern top spec bikes, but the position I was riding in is aerodynamic and that is the most important part. The most annoying part about my budget bike has to have been the shifters and their tiny little thumb buttons, which are physically impossible to reach and change into a harder gear when you're riding on the drops, which is kind of important when you race it. Attacks came thick and fast around the halfway marker and soon my budget bike and I were on the limit, regularly riding north of 500 watts, even when following behind other riders. This was until the elastic finally snapped and 10 or so riders went clear up the road. My budget bike and I left behind feeling sorry for ourselves in the main bunch. I tried to bridge across with my pals Justin and George, but it was just too little, too late. We returned to the bunch where I sat the last rider for some time trying to regain my composure and chatted with a few other riders who didn't make the front group as well. With a few laps remaining, I found a second wind and was soon riding clear with a small group of riders, each of us trying to salvage a respectable finish position. And with just three laps to go, we had broken clear, sat between the lead group and the main bunch. As we approached the finish line, sprinting with all of our effort, I cast my mind back to earlier when I said to George that having his £10,000 bike would be worth it if he beat me. At which point, we crossed the finish line. George, just one place in front of me. Oh. Okay, I just looped back to the finish. First things first, I survived. That's a good success. The bike didn't let me down. My body just about held up. Um, started really fast. Pretty strong winds, fast into the finish, tailwind. Um, loads of attacks, little moves, eventually, a group of about 15 go clear up the road. Myself, George and Justin try to bridge across. To be fair, halfway across I wasn't, I felt like I was having an out of body experience, but um, <laughs> we, we didn't quite make it. So I ended up back in the second group and then a last minute flurry to try and salvage something out of it to hold my head high and represent this bike in a good light. But I think I might have just scraped into the top 20 Maybe, it'll be close. So, I've enjoyed riding this bike. I need to answer the original question which I set out was, can I make a bike for around the thousand pound marker that's gonna give me almost all the performance of a top spec bike? And truth be told, I think I've got very close. You can't match performance of expensive top spec bikes. The technology has evolved so much, but for a fraction of the price, 
you can get very close. Anyway, let me know in the comments section down below, not only what you think of the bike, but also what you think of my efforts, because I tried really hard for us. 354 watt normalized, 45 kilometers an hour. That'll do me. Over and out. See you later, guys.